Thank you for joining us for another inspiring message from Journey Church. To learn more about our ministries, please visit us online at journeychurch.org. All right, good morning, Journey Church. Are you glad to be in God's house today? Can we give him some praise and adoration in here? <laughs> My name is Brian Lamro, one of the teaching pastors here. Thank you so much for being a part of what God's doing here in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. All those that are watching online, joining us on our iCampus, thank you so much for being a part of what God is doing here as well. We are in our doctrine series. This is week three of 13, and we hope that you guys are buckled in, ready for what God wants to do in this place. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time chatting this morning. we got a lot of ground to cover. And so what I'm going to ask you to do, if you will, take out your Bibles or your mobile device. If you have your Bibles or mobile device, I want to encourage you, if you do have a mobile device, to go to uversion.com forward slash live, and you'll punch in the, uh, the uh, zip code here, 32244, and then you would find a live event. And most of the notes and everything that we're going to be going over today is going to be available for you there. We have a lot of content, and so I would encourage you, if you do have a mobile device, to do that now. And if not, go to Genesis. We'll kick it old school, and uh, we will do it uh, as we walk through the Word together. You know, uh, today's topic is about creation, and what I would tell you is that this is a very uh, long and uh, drawn-out study. Uh, there's about 25 hours worth of content, and so what I would tell you is that I've taken 25 hours and I've uh, condensed all that God has made, all that He has created, and we have condensed it down to about 25 minutes, and we were able to do that this week. So we're going to share that with you, and uh, what I would encourage you to do is don't let this be this final stopping point for your uh, study on creation. I would say that there are some resources out there for you that I believe would be very helpful. So if you have a pen or you would like to take notes, this is what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you three resources this morning uh, so we can expound on this maybe throughout the week. I would encourage you to read Genesis 1 and go to these resources. The first one is this, is the Institute for Creation Research. Their website is icr.org, icr.org. The second one would be marsill.com. Pastor Mark Driscoll did a very in-depth study on creation, and you would find many of the notes that we are going to be discussing today uh, there on creation at marsill.com. The last one is Dr. Dino. Anybody ever heard of Dr. Dino? Uh, drdino.com uh, is a great place, uh, a great resource. Their ministry is actually based out of Pensacola. And I just found out that Stephanie actually worked there not too long ago. So um, Dr. Eric Hoven is actually the son of the founder of that ministry. And you can discover many things about creation there at drdino.com. So with all that being said, let's jump into God's word. Let's pray before we do it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for creation. We thank you, God, that we are a part of your beautiful design. We thank you for the heavens and the earth. Lord, you calls and you call us to be great stewards of that which you have created. And so, Lord, I pray that today that we would know you, that we would know who you are, that we would never turn our eyes just to creation, but we would worship the Creator. And so today in our studies, Lord, I pray that we would know you, that, Lord, we would make you known. Lord, I pray that you would talk to us and speak to us by the power of your Holy Spirit at work through your word. And so that today, that none would be left out, that every person here would know you to a greater level. Though we may not have all of the answers, we know the answer to all questions is God. And so we rest in that, and we know who you are, and we thank you for your fellowship. We ask it all in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. 
So talking about creation today, big topic. In fact, uh, you know, at, as I finished up last night and, and finished up this morning's first service, uh, being talking to other believers and what they believe and how creation came about and, and how everyone has a different view, it's pretty hilarious because I'll tell you, the Bible, when you talk about creation, we can read a lot and we can know a lot, but there are so many different things that, that God doesn't reveal in his word. The first foundation that I want to lay today is the fact that today, Today, the Bible is not a scientific textbook. It is theological history about God creating man, woman. He created the heavens and the earth, and he created us for fellowship with him and him coming into creation to save that which went array or astray. That would be our sinful nature, that we were born, and then we were born with a sinful nature. Adam and Eve sinned, and he had to send his son to come into human history to become the sacrifice so that you and I can have access to the Father. So the Bible is not a scientific textbook. So I want you to, when we read Scripture today together, I want you to realize that we need to look at it in light of that. Not all of our questions are going to be answered this side of eternity, but I do believe that the Bible does speak to many different things. So when it comes to creation, Genesis chapter 1, starting with verse 1, this is what the Bible does say about creation. Is that in the beginning, God. Okay? In the beginning, God. And it's important that we know this. It, it, you notice that in the book, in the Bible, it doesn't say, in the beginning, you. This is all about you. This is about your life. It's about what you want and what you desire. No, in the beginning, the Bible says, was God. He was before all things, and that God was the one, and he is the person in which the world and heavens and everything that we get to enjoy today was created. This book is about God himself. Galileo said it well when he said this, the Bible exists not to tell us as much how the heavens go, but rather to tell us how to go to heaven. How many of you guys would agree with that? We're not, you know, the Bible doesn't go into all great detail about how all this thing came together, but the Bible does show us in which the way that we can go to heaven and have relationship with God the Father through the Son. In fact, the entire Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, reveals one person. From the very beginning of time, we see that the entire Bible reveals one person is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the person who would come, die a sinner's death. Though he did not know sin, he became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God because of the sacrifice of Jesus. And so, really, this entire story that you and I get to be a part of, it's all about Jesus. It's all about God. The Apostle Paul writes in, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, say this aloud with me, that all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. So this story this love story that God has written to us, it is about himself. And it is about us, how we get to participate in that which God has created. So let's go back to the first line of the Bible. Genesis chapter 1, in the beginning, God. We see three Hebrew words. Uh, if we look at it in Hebrew, the three Hebrew words that we would see in these first few phrases is this. Rashith bara asa. Now, Rashith bara asa, I am not a Hebrew uh, studier, I'm not one that would know all the things about Hebrew, but what I will tell you about Hebrew words is this, these three words are very, very critical when we're talking about the creation of the world. The first word, rashith, is a Hebrew term that means an indefinite period of of time. It's the beginning, it is the first, it is the best, it is chief. It is the number one thing that it, that it became, and it was a long, indefinite period of time. We see the word created here in this first line is bara. Everybody say bara. Ah, roll your tongue. Say it with me, bara. All right, you Hebrew scholars out there, you sound beautiful. This word literally means that it came from nothing and was shaped 
into something. Now, only God can bara. That means that, that this came from absolutely nothing, that the earth came into existence from nothing. When God spoke, it came into existence. You and I do not have that power today where we can speak and we've got a double cheeseburger uh, from McDonald's. But God could speak and we could have a double cheeseburger from McDonald's. He could bara a McDouble and we would have lunch today. We do have lunch outside. But see, God is all about bara. This is how he creates. We can asa, which means that we can create something from something else. We can make our bed. We can make a sandwich. We can make the burger and the two buns and the cheese and we can put it together because it's something that's already been created and we can do something with it. Asa also means preparing for human life when it comes to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. So Rashith, Bara, and Asa, these are found, these Hebrew words are found in the first few phrases of Genesis chapter 1. So let me break this down for you. God eternally exists, and at some point in time, He created the heavens and the earth. He, he came in and He Rashith. He came in and he created the heavens and the earth, bara, and it was created for human and prepared it for human life, which is asa, and that is what we know about creation. Now there are many different, there are many different views, and we want to go over uh, creationism and the biblical views that people find uh, them believing in today. So what are the various Christian views of creation? We're going to go over six today. I know there's many more, but we're going to go over six for the sake of time that we have Today, the first position is this, historic creationism. Historic creationism. They teach that the earth is very old or that human life and that the earth was created at some point in eternity past. And then over the course of six days, God prepared the earth for human life. This would be that the, the earth is old, human life is young, and during the six days of creation, God created it and prepared it and readied the earth for human life. Then we see that God created man and woman, Adam and Eve. Pastor Eric is going to talk about image next week as he talks about that. And the, the result is that they teach that six days in creation are literal days and that they teach that the earth is old and that humanity is young. That historical creation, uh, creationism traces back all the way to the man Augustine. The second position is this, young earth creationism, and, I, and I, this is where I find my belief, where I find where I am best rooted. This is the young earth creationism, and that is that God made everything in six days, including the heavens and the earth, that the earth didn't exist for an indefinite period of time before God made the man and the woman and put them here on earth. That God created everything in six literal days. Therefore, the earth is very young and human life is very young. And that the six days of creation in Genesis are very literal. Okay, third position is the gap theory. Um, that is that the earth is very old and that there's a gap between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. This is the theory that Genesis 1-1, God, uh, in the beginning, God, you know, and then God created the heavens and the earth. And then there was this long period of time, could be billions of years, that maybe there was a, there was a, a human race that existed before Genesis 1-2. But before Genesis 1-2, there was a major cataclysmic event that maybe it was the fall of uh, Satan and the angels, and everything was destroyed, and God started over again in Genesis 1 verse 2. This is the gap theory that the earth is very old, that human existence is very young based on that the earth has been there for billions of years and between Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2 that something happened major and then God then prepared the earth for creation. Number four. The fourth is called literary framework view. It says that the earth is very old, humanity is very young, and that Genesis 1 and 2 is very poetic in nature, and that we cannot take the six days as literal 24-hour days. And I will tell you that Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, if you do read it, that it is very poetic in nature. There's a lot that goes on. You can read it, and it's very poetic. It's just like Song of Solomon and Psalms and Proverbs. So it does have that flair to it, but it doesn't necessarily mean because it's poetic that it is not a literal fact. 
in which God was trying to explain. I mean, if you think about it this way, God is a creative God, so maybe he decided that he would take uh, creation and he would share it in a very poetic and creative way to his people. So, uh, you know, that's a literary, uh, literary framework view. The fifth is day, age, view. And they would say that the earth is very old, humanity is very young, and the six days in Genesis 1 are not literal days, but they are long extended periods of time. The sixth one is this, 